resuming our verse-by-verse -verse reading and commentary, I guess you would call it, on the book of Psalms, we come to Psalm 37, verse 18. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, The days of the blameless are known to the Lord. God knows you if you belong to him. The blameless are Christians. They're the ones who God does not blame for their sins because Jesus took the blame for them. He took the punishment for them. It says their inheritance will endure forever. Death is not the end for God's people, for Christians. It is just the beginning. That's when we receive our inheritance. That's when we really begin to enjoy the fruits of our salvation. This is a time of testing while we're on earth. It's a time of suffering. It's a time of many challenges and many difficulties oftentimes. The inheritance comes after we die. Verse 19, in times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Overcoming difficulties by the grace of God. Verse 20, but the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. Look good for a while, successful for a while. But in the end, they perish. God's enemies, who are the wicked, and who are the wicked? Obviously, the wicked are those who don't know Christ. You're not saved by being good as opposed to being bad, because we've all sinned. But if you know Christ, if you're trusting him as your Lord and Savior, then the direction of your life is going to be good, not blatant, willful, continuous wickedness. And when you do sin, you confess it because Jesus is your Savior and you want to because the Holy Spirit is in you. Verse 21, the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. So the wicked takes what doesn't belong to them. On the other hand, the righteous gives what does belong to them. Benevolence, kindness, those are fruits of the Holy Spirit. Those are things that the Holy Spirit produces inside of a Christian. It's one way you know you're a Christian. Care about others. You're willing to sacrifice for others. Verse 22, those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be cut off. You won't be blessed if you're under the curse of sin. Fortunately for Christians, Jesus took the curse of sin for us when he died on the cross. That's what the Bible says. 23. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm, stable, direction from God, making right choices. Doesn't mean you'll be problem free, but it means that God will be with you, sustaining you all the way. Verse 24, though he stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hands. It doesn't mean that a Christian won't, won't have setbacks and, and won't run into trouble and won't have disappointments. No, he'll stumble. Everybody stumbles because everything, everybody has bad things happen to them in this world. But somehow, someway, by the power of God, he lifts his people up again. They stumble but they don't crumble. God sustains. He gets us going. He sustains us in our spirits. And that goes a long way. Verse 25, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. And it's important to see that this is not a promise from God because there are plenty of righteous people in the world who are hungry. Plenty of people who know Jesus, who are really going through some difficult times, financially, physically, 
But this, is, this has been the personal experience of David, that he himself never saw the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. No, the righteous are not forsaken by God. Christians are not forsaken by God. Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But sometimes he allows us to go through difficult times, just as he did when he suffered on Holy Thursday in the garden and, of course, on Good Friday. And he himself cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, he was taking our sins. He was doing the work of God. And sometimes, not just for Jesus, but for Christians, that means that we have to go through very difficult times. Verse 26, They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. When you as a Christian live for the Lord, your children will be blessed. If for no other reason, you're setting them a good, godly example, and you are teaching by your conduct that Jesus is real. And that's even more impressive than teaching by words. Verse 27. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. And that's repentance. Repentance is turning from evil, but it's also doing good. It's a change of mind that leads to a change of conduct. Verse 28, For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. God's going to protect you forever. If you're a Christian, you belong to Jesus Christ. The Bible says no one will snatch you out of my hands. That's what Jesus said. He said no one's going to snatch you out of the Father's hands. He is able to save you to the uttermost, Scripture says. And certainly once you die, it's all over. You got it made. He's going to protect you. You're never going to get kicked out of heaven. You're never going to lose your salvation. You're never going to... Uh, be banished from the new earth where we will live with Jesus forever in our resurrected body as Christians. Never going to get kicked off the new earth. And so, good times ahead for all of us who know Christ. Verse 29, The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom and his tongue speaks what is just. Wise words from the mouth of Christians who study the Word of God. You read the Word of God, you will assimilate the wisdom of God, and that will benefit you in every area of life. God's wisdom applies to every area of life, no matter what you may be doing. <clears throat> Verse 31, the law of his God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. And that's the key. See, if you're a Christian, the law of God is in your heart. You don't, you don't follow a written code, a written law. But when the Holy Spirit comes into you, and he does when you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, he writes God's law in your heart. In other words, he shows you what's right and wrong, and he gives you the desire to do what's right and wrong. Verse 32, the wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lives, but the Lord will not leave them in their power or let them be condemned when brought to trial. So God protects us. God is with us all the time. And God will see that his people receive justice in the end. Not always in this life, but that's what eternity is for. Eternity in part is for making right what was wrong in this life. And God will do that because he is a God of justice. And so it says in verse 34, wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. Again, this is a faith walk. We don't always get what we've got coming right now. We're we don't always get the good right now. 
It's a faith walk. You continue to live for Jesus. You continue to live the Word of God and try to please Christ and worship Him and have faith in Him, trusting that He is absolutely right, and in the end it will pay off. Verse 35, I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a green tree in its native soil, but he soon passed away and was no more, though I looked for him. He could not be found. Yeah. The the success, the blessing, for lack of a better word, I guess, the prosperity of, of the wicked is just a transient thing. I mean, it's going to be over, unlike what awaits Christians. Verse 37. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace but all sinners will be destroyed the future of the wicked will be cut off so again he just reiterates these things and talking about the penalty of sin sinners will be destroyed as opposed to Christians who will flourish because their sins were paid for by Jesus 39 the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord he is their stronghold in times of trouble, yeah, we owe our salvation to Jesus, not to ourselves, not to any supposed goodness that we may have. Our salvation comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, who purchased it for us on the cross. And there's no other way to get saved but by repentance and receiving Christ as Lord and Savior. 40. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Of course, that will be the final state of all of God's people. Protection from the wicked forever and ever, good times forever and ever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thanks for spending this time with me.